Good evening. Welcome to the planning board meeting of uh, February 12th, 2018. I'm Frank Durso. I am temporarily chairing this meeting and vice chair tonight is David Paul. We have some uh, members that are traveling and otherwise a little bit ill. We'll have our names in front of us. <laughs> so bear with us. We have a little bit of technical difficulties logging in. Uh, we have a wonderful new furniture system here, which is a uh, kind of neat we can see each other face to face um, and we are live on uh, Monday night so um, oh, I don't get one. <coughs> we're meeting at 7 o'clock because we have a lot of things to cover uh, but unfortunately with not enough members here we can't actually meet on all the topics that are, are, are on our agenda um, uh, let's see so the first thing for instance is Whisper Ridge uh, which we do not have enough members to uh, to vote on tonight. Um, although we're very close to the finish on this, um, so I think the motion would be to reschedule it for another another date, if that's acceptable. It has to be. Acceptable. Has to be. <laughs> yeah. um, so uh, is that that's what we do, Lane? Yep. Um, so. Do we have a motion to? We have to have a date and time. Yeah. Move to a specific date and time. All right. So our February 26 meeting is pretty full with uh, three public hearings. Um, so unless you would want to start early again, like today, um, we would be talking March 12th. I think we should meet early, like today. I think yeah. if we meet early, <coughs> there is about a half hour of time to cover the rest of the project and discussions and. Voting. Are people available to meet? Start That'll early. be on the 26th. Yep. I think so. Yeah, I think we should meet early. I'll make a Maybe motion to continue the public hearing to February 26th at 7 p.m. Does that work for that? Okay. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. Second. Motion been made and seconded. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any against? Nay. Any abstains? Motion passes. Sorry about that. See you in two weeks. We'll get you squared away right off. Uh, next. When's our next uh, scheduled? 7.30. And it's a continued public hearing on Saddle Stormwater Management, but they are not here well, yet because start it starts right at 7.30. Uh, so business to be considered by the board at any time during the meeting. Uh, the application for ANR approval not required plan for 20 Fruit Street. Um, Unfortunately, they um, have said they would like an extension to the next meeting, so they're not here. We're just knocking these down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do we need a motion for that? Uh, they've requested an extension to well, they have uh, given us to through to March 3 to file a decision, but um, the meeting would be on the 26th. Just under other business, just like right. Today. So you don't need to vote on that. Okay. They've given the board an extension of time to file with the town clerk. Yeah. They send an email to them. Uh, next, a discussion request for off-premise signs, Legacy Farms North, uh, Pulte Homes of New England. Uh, this is a, an issue that we've discussed previously with um, in regards to the larger sign and, and in last meeting about the issue that we have with the smaller sign uh, was, was most previously discussed. Um, are they here yet? Mm. I believe they are coming. Yeah, I had. Mr. Mr. Bluth came in today, and I told him that he probably should be here from the beginning. That maybe he, you know, there be an opportunity to uh, fit him in. I don't see him yet. Uh, how does the board feel about? We have to wait for him. Don't we should we? wait. Yeah. How about minutes? <laughs> <laughs> That's minutes we could do. Next up is minutes for twelve eighteen. I'll move the minutes as written for twelve eighteen. Second. Uh, and as there's been a motion, it's been seconded. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Against and abstains. Abstentions. Motion passes. <coughs> um, the minutes from January 8th's meeting. Make a motion to move the minutes as, as written. Motion to pass as written. Any second? Second. Motion's been passed and seconded. Any discussion? 
Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 All against? Uh, any abstentions? The motion passes. Look at us tear through business. <laughs> it's crazy. It's deceiving. Mm -hmm. All uh, right, this is not working. I'm going to give up. Are we prepared to discuss the Public Lands good. Preservation Act? Should have done this one. I did. Did anyone going to come? It's at least something. Thank you. I'm sorry, say it again. For the public. Public Lands Preservation Act. Oh, the. Okay. Yeah, I'm not right sure how that appeared on the agenda, but it's been on for some time. And you have a letter from the Conservation Commission. <laughs> I'm assuming that someone has asked for your support. And maybe that comes from CONCOM. I don't know. Are we prepared but to discuss it now? Or <coughs> do we want to do this with, I think it's more of a John thing. Do we have any materials? Yeah, in the, um, yeah. In the packet, there was a letter of support from CONCOM. And well, I did the text read the letter. I mean, I don't have any objection to this board supporting the, the legislation. Uh, me personally. I think it, it's common sense legislation, um, so I would I would move to support it. But I don't know how other people feel. If they read the letter or not? Yeah, I read the letter. Mm -hmm. and I feel the same. Um, <coughs> we write our own letter, just to send a good spell the way they do. That's a good point. We could do that. Did I, Amy, do you know what page that's on? That yeah. is. 442. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that you know I'm gonna. Be a long time getting to there. Um, I did read it though. I mean, should we um, should we contemplate writing our own letter? Did you think about that, Amy, in terms of what we would include? Or uh, no, I thought I thought maybe someone from Conservation Commission would be here to explain a little bit more. But um, so it could be all, maybe we should all think about it in the next time. Is there a deadline? Do you know no. When is the legislation coming up? Do you I know? I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So maybe we could wait till next time and we could decide if we want to write a letter. I think that's my feeling. Yeah. At the very least, we could support their letter, right? No, I, I totally we could support their letter, but it wouldn't be a terrible idea to contemplate writing our sure. own. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've yet to have this. I'm not yet to get to write to the page, but I think John has something to say about it. Um, he'd like to say about it. Oh. Um, we don't have anybody uh, remotely, do we? There was no. some discussion of that. Okay. No, Cliff backed up. He's just getting his back taken care of. <clears throat> I'm like one second away from finding <laughs> what I need to find. I'm a thousand miles away from it. <laughs> Fortunately, I read it, but I'm still in Stormwater, which was like, what, 600 pages? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so as by consensus, we'll discuss the um, Pre Public Lands Preservation Act next meeting. I'm Further comfortable and deeper, with that. Uh, as it does need some attention. Uh, board member reports. I have something to report. Uh, Cliff and I are on the uh, community outreach uh, subcommittee, and we had a meeting today um, at 35 Parkwood discussing that area with uh, the developer and owner. And I saw Victor here, but he must have went outside. Um, and they gave us this material showing, showing the updates to the building and what they're doing with uh, 35 and what they'd like to do in the future. They've reached out to Eversource. They're uh, going to talk to them about perhaps giving Eversource an alternative or the gate project that's the gateway. Been geared for Elm Street, which is, I think is a, is a great uh, solution. Um, <coughs> and we talked about uh, their views for the uh, that area of town going forward, and I will submit these this material uh, to Kobe and Elaine for uh, to be scanned and shared with the rest of the of the board. Um, and uh, I thought it was a, a very good meeting, and um, I look forward to uh, learning more about you know, what what the town companies and, and citizens uh, think about what we should be doing in the future. There's that. You um, also had the center school forum. That'd mm -hmm. be kind of cool to hear about. So Amy and I attended uh, a part of the forum for the center school reuse uh, committee, and as uh, Muriel uh, was a participant as well. Um, that went uh, very well. We got online. We got over 300 responses at that point uh, last Saturday, and uh, 
we had about 30 particip participants. It was kind of a snowstormy day, but we still had a, a good turnout. <coughs> um, Amy, do you have anything to add on that? Yeah, um, I'm glad that people were coming and spoke out from what they wanted, um, and that a lot of people are filling out the survey. We have a meeting tomorrow, too. We'll, we'll be reviewing the information that we gathered from the forum. We, we had a, a handout and people gave us different rankings of where they thought some of our general ideas uh, were weighted, which ones were more important. And we, we also asked for new ideas. And um, it's also on HCAM, so it's... Yeah, that's what I was going to say. People could watch if they missed it. <coughs> there were a couple of really creative ideas. The the um, the repair or the the, the um, makerspace. Makerspace. That's the word I was looking for. The repair space. I thought that was um, a really unique idea um, that hadn't uh, that I had not heard before. So that was interesting. Can you guys elaborate. Uh, makerspace replacement space for makerspace, so people could use the space. Um, I, what I have seen it, I, I wouldn't be the right person to explain it, but what I have seen it, it or how I envision it, is like crafting space. When you see the, the big um, crafter locations and people can, can rent smaller space within the big space. Okay. Um, so um, he had an example of somewhere not to, Grafton maybe? Somewhere, somewhere nearby. So would it kind of be like an ongoing craft fair? It's not a crafter space, so I use that as an analogy. Okay. It's a maker space <coughs> for um, for building, making, repairing. Um, somebody else added it, the repair it was technology feature. as well as mm -hmm. everything from soup to nuts. So it's a he actually explained space. it really well. So I don't. I'm tossing well, it out there. Encourage. <laughs> yeah. It was a valid one. No, um, but it was a very unique idea, at least um, worth um, exploring more completely. I thought. Sounds good. Hmm. So, uh, on our agenda, we have correspondence. Um, we've received many uh, emails concerning the Chamberlain Wayland Street uh, project, and um, I thank the members of the community who sent them in. Um, we also went for a site walk, which we'll talk about later on the Aguirre's situation. Sure. Um, Chair? Sure. Um, Elaine, do you know who will be here from the, the stormwater management? Who will be representing that? Um, Victor, I thought I said he was here. I was just going to say, if maybe if they're out in the hall, we could <laughs> grab them and we could start early well, after they're ready. Uh, we can't start early, can we? Because it's yeah, public hearing. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I celebrate that thought. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have 14 minutes. I think you should do a little soft shoe or something for well, us, Frank. Well, there's been recent uh, compliment, accomplishments by children and planning board members. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> we better leave our yeah. kids out of this, I think. Maybe even third place. In, oh, wow. What event was that? You're going to kill me. He, a wrestling tournament wrestling? for JV wrestlers. Thank you so mm -hmm. much. What was fun, especially, was his big brother was uh, the... Uh, announcer because he's the wrestling coach at Algonquin and that's where it was. So wow. I had two boys on stage when that happened. That went well with the announcing and no teasing? Yeah, no teasing. This is serious business. This is wrestling. I want you to know. So we could discuss legacy plans whenever they're here. Um, so if uh, when, when, our, when our members do review this, uh, Paige, you want to feel better? Sorry. Cliff, I hope you're feeling better. And uh, someone from Pulte is here now? Oh, Pulte okay. is here now? <laughs> we can uh, discuss your uh, your, pro your signed issue. Um, can Thank you introduce you yourself? Mr. Chairman. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Reed Blute, and uh, I'm Pulte Holmes. So so I would like to uh, respectfully request a continuance. Uh, we're not really prepared to go ahead tonight. Uh, but you can move us to uh, you know, the next meeting if you have time. We appreciate that. Um, Thank you. <laughs> I thought part of the issue was that we had discussed this already. And I remember specifically our chair had asked you to take the smaller sign down. And yes, sir, all, all the signs have been removed. 
All right, as of uh, recently? Are you kidding? Um, yeah, I don't recall exactly when, about a couple of weeks ago, I would say. All right, I'm pretty sure in the past couple of weeks I've seen the sign still up. Um, I can get that information right. for you uh, when we come back at the next meeting. But one of the things that kind of has a board concern is that we had this discussion. Oh, you can sit down if you so like. Much. <laughs> you know, um, I just we had this discussion help from my friends. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the sign wasn't taken down, and then now we're having a discussion where you want to reschedule, which is which is fine. But I'm, my concern is that if the sign is still up, it's kind of the point of this of this meeting um, is to be clear that it's not supposed to be up. And if, I understand. So it's not up. So it was if taken down some time ago, I can get you the correct, the exact date. Okay. So I um, remember it was very rainy. Yeah. Well, that's that's Monday. anytime this, well, that this past yesterday. week. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't yesterday, though, but I'll, uh -huh. I'll check with the sign folks, and, and I'll be sure to let you know. In fact, I'll communicate tomorrow you know, through Elaine if that's uh, acceptable. All right. So, the, in, so just to be clear, that sm the small sign, not up. Correct. Right. And then we'll discuss it when you come back, what we can do going forward. Um, Thank you. Is there a time that's convenient for you? Um, uh, next meeting? Tell me, is there a convenient time we can discuss it? Twenty-six. The I think the twenty-six is full. I think. So we'll go to March. Twelfth. March twelfth. Uh, mm -hmm. That sounds good. Any other comments? So that just be a miscellaneous item again whenever we get to it. Thank you very much. Thanks. Okay. There's no time for that. It's just it's a miscellaneous agenda item. Thanks. I'll approach the mic. If you approach the mic. Oh, sure. Just so people can hear it, huh? Um, uh, for the sake of my readers, could you tell me where this sign is supposed to be located right now. You saw it uh, located. It's near the location of the former Peach Street and Franklin Road, where it's Jesse Farm North. Okay, I did see a sign there, but I also saw one down at the intersection that I thought that was the one you were talking about uh, in your original discussions. <coughs> and so previously, there was a large white sign on East okay, Main so Street. so there were two signs on the discussion? This, this point of this meeting was just the one sign. The other one was already dealt with. Okay, that so was the one down by East Main. Thank you very much. Thank you. In the packet, there was a proposal for, I think, five different signs, right? But that's going forward. Okay, yeah. Amy, do you know the page number <laughs> for <laughs> the Whalen Chamberlain one? Oh, for Whalen Chamberlain. Oh, I'm struggling right here. here. It's um, 372. Thank you so much. Oh, very nice. Yeah, when I, uh, when I should explain oh, to you our, know what? That was foolish of me. I had written that down too. Look at I should explain to our audience and people viewing at home. We have an extra large packet today that isn't easily handled by our iPad, so we were, we're on our laptops and we're on a contingency plan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so our, we're a little bit behind getting where we need to be sometimes with our with our technology, um, but we'll get there. So we're still eight minutes to go before uh, stormwater management. Um, I have a potential future topic. I think we can bring that up now too. I, we got an email. I know from Historic District, so I assume that John got it too about Huffington 101 at the library. Can you speak into the library? Sorry. Wait. All board and committee chairs got an email from the selectman's office about an event at the library on March 10th called Huffington 101, and all boards and committees were invited to participate. So um, we might want to think about that at a future meeting. Can you explain what that is a little bit? Um, I can look. So I think some boards and committees and nonprofits will have tables explaining about what they do, and there will be a, there will also be a section where they talk about people who are new to town, what, how to get to know how ta the town works. Um, people who've not lived in a small town before may have not never been to town meeting, if they lived in a city. I'm or sure share with people Just an introduction to the town and how to get involved in how how good town government works. And that'll be held at the high school, middle at, school? At the library. At the library. In March 10th. Our beautiful new library, which I'm able to uh, check out recently. So we should probably post that meeting if 
uh, members are planning to go, just in case we have uh, a majority of members. I did, but it, so it's actually put on by the library, and it's Saturday, March 10th from 10 to 2. Page 22 is where it starts. So our next topic will be stormwater, and so as we prepare our laptops, I think that was pretty close to the beginning of that. It's 22, page 22. Thank you. Page 22. 22. Two, two. <coughs> The larger the document, the slower it scrolls. Status of town hall. No. Still under <laughs> we got a two million dollar grant through the state, though, through uh, Senator Spilka, for to refurbish town hall, 17 Main Street town hall. Um, so that's good news. So I don't know anything about that. Oh, I thought you worked on it. No. Someone did. Someone. Wow. Is there anybody outside? No. So Mary Arnott, who's in our audience, is a really good television host. And, uh, it's very hard to uh, have dead air sometimes. But bear with us. We can't just start our discussion on this next topic until 7.30. It's a public uh, posted meeting where Potentially, someone could be coming and not want to miss it, and it starts at 7.30, so we wouldn't want anyone to miss something that they came here specifically to hear. Okay. Mr. Sure. Chair, okay. can I ask another question? Sure. Uh, why, Mr. Chairman, why couldn't the first agenda item move forward? If you have six people, what's the majority for that? It's these, uh, the issue is that I wasn't, I've missed two of those meetings on Whisper Ridge, so I can't vote on it. We wouldn't have a quorum. So we need a super to the quorum is five, but we need more than. You need a super majority. I vote. also missed a meeting, so. Oh, okay. So if yeah. people missed, but can you, Mr. Chairman, can they make it up by watching the video? Yes. They can make up one. One meeting. One meeting. So just kind of oh, oh, somebody missed two. So our thumb would not be able to vote regardless. <coughs> I wouldn't be able to vote. Thank you so much for you. And there, good question. And there are members watching, potentially watching live, um, but they, because they're not interacting, that doesn't count. So we have to plan it out in advance. This is, they're, they're, they're not here last minute because of medical reasons. So it's um, this fact of life in the winter in New England. So. We have two minutes to go. So no, I, Mr. Chair, I have a. Uh, question about the or just a comment about the um, agenda sure so you guys can correct me if I'm wrong but we'll have a half hour to discuss the stormwater for Saddle Hill development tall pines and then at that point we will check with the 
Chamberlain Street Will and Road group, and if they want to move forward, we will have the hearing then. But if they don't, we'll reschedule it. Um, and I guess if there's anything left over from the stormwater, if we need more time, we could use it for that. If not, we'll end our meeting then. Is that the way you guys envision it? Relatively early. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. Do you want me to talk more and try to? <laughs> I'll just get myself in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> hey, stop agreeing so easy, girl. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Remember, we, we updated the public on my son's accomplishments. So. Okay. When is our public hearing on the zoning articles? Is that next time? 26th, yeah. And what time? 7.30. 7 so, okay. I, I was just wondering if, if we could have... for like a, a slide to explain each one of the articles. Some of them are just wording changes, but ones that involve. <coughs> That's a good idea. Yeah, okay. Definitely. And for our viewing audience at home for the next 37 seconds. Or longer. <laughs> are they here? Yeah. No, no, just that uh, the, the articles we're talking about are for town meeting, and they're prom promoted to us through our a subcommittee um, that reviews uh, Town bylaws and suggest changes, um, Zach, and they uh, forwarded us seven, eight, or nine of those, and we discussed uh, moving them forward uh, onto the ballot. Now we will discuss the merits of each one and if we'll support uh, or not uh, each of these. And um, it can be very informative on how the town works and uh, how to improve the town and how to improve uh, our bylaws. Uh, keep us a nice pleasant place to live importantly it's a public hearing so people can come and contribute to that discussion mm -hmm. <coughs> I remember when Amy was uh, a citizen uh, just she, a lonely citizen she came and gave us very <laughs> uh, great feedback on the process and uh, now she's a member mm -hmm. so now 730 the magic time we will uh, we'll hand over the uh, meeting to our project lead uh, David Paul Hi, is the applicant? Yeah, the applicant is here. Great. Come on board. So we haven't done one of these in a while. Correct me if I'm wrong. Many board members, some order management. So um, apologize in advance if we uh, mess up on the order or seem a little bit unknowledgeable, but I'm sure we'll get through it fine. Um, I have a little seven item agenda here just uh, to go through it if you guys have seen it. So um, why don't I just do the real quick overview, it won't be more than a minute or two. So um, this is for a stormwater management permit um, submitted to the board pursuant to chapter 172, stormwater management and erosion control, majority vote is required. Um, We've endorsed a, an A&R plan for five lots, but we now know it's up to 11 lots. Um, and there's also the issue of a, a scenic road permit, um, which has already been issued. That's correct, Elaine, that permit. When it says the permit has been issued. Only for four lots. For four driveways. Four okay. Lots. For four of the lots, correct. Okay, thank you. Um, so we'll, we'll talk through that. Um, and I think that's it. I think um, you guys have been before us before, so we're familiar with the area, uh, the lower part of Saddle Hill Road. Um, and I guess at this point we'll turn it over to the applicant. Excellent. Thank you very much. My name is John Parsons. Uh, to my left is Victor Galvani. We're the applicants with Saddle Hill Realty Company, LLC. Uh, we'd like to turn it over to our engineer, Wayne Felix, with uh, Waterman Associates. Thanks, John. Thanks, Mr. Chairman, all the members of the board, uh, Wayne Bellick, WDA Design Group. I'm also joined here tonight by one of my partners in crime, Greg Scotchy. Greg's the, uh, the engineer on the project, too. Uh, he's, uh, he, he did the design, uh, the stormwater management system, and will serve as my human shield should I need one. Uh, so, again, uh, I appreciate you, you bringing up, Mr. Paul, some of the, the permitting that's been done on the project, you beat uh, up a little bit of my intro, which is much appreciated. So yes, 
The first uh, five lots have been endorsed as, as A and R lots. Uh, we will be coming before the board uh, in fairly short order, probably within the next month or two, uh, with the, uh, the balance of the lots, uh, lots uh, six through eleven. Uh, and the property was also the subject of the scenic road application permit, as Elaine had alluded to, uh, for the first four lots. Uh, so, and then we will be before you folks again um, with the uh, the balance of those lots. So again, thanks for having us. We appreciate your time. Before I get into the project, um, I just want to, to comment uh, about uh, town staff. They've been wonderful. Elaine and our group have been wonderful. And Phil Paradis has just been absolutely wonderful to work with. Uh, open lines of communications, which is how you, you tend to get things done. So again, uh, much appreciated. Really don't need to get into the description of the property, but I'll touch on it from a hydrology point of view. Uh, I know you folks are, are familiar with the, uh, the site, but as, as we look at it again, uh, north looking up toward my, I guess in this position would be up to my right. Uh, the property is uh, bound to its west side uh, by Saddle Hill Road uh, and to the, the east side by a large uh, wetland system. Uh, that wetland system measures some 350 acres or thereabouts uh, and eventually gets down to Route 85. Um, what you see on the, on the map here is uh, ex uh, the existing conditions uh, watershed map, uh, existing uh, EDA area 100, EDA area 200, which are the, uh, the watershed areas uh, on the property. What you see in the middle here, so it's defined by the boundary in here, the dashed line, uh, which runs around the perimeter of the property and down to the edge of the wetland edge. Okay, so what we've done is we've used the wetland edge as our design point. We could have taken it out to the property line, but for the purposes of this analysis, which is probably a little bit more conservative because we're not dealing with the times of concentration within the flat wetlands down below, uh, we've uh, used, utilized the, uh, the existing wetland boundary. Again, two watershed areas on, on the site, and uh, it's pretty much the site is pretty much bifurcated by the two with a ridge line uh, that comes through, as I, I, I'm illustrating here, so that a portion of the watershed uh, pitches down to this area through a, a large swale and a smaller uh, swale that comes in this direction. And likewise, in this area here, there are a the couple swales that uh, go easterly, and then generally speaking, the watershed. Uh, areas continue to the uh, east into the large wetland system. I'm going to uh, digress for a second from the post-development watershed only so that uh, I'll get into that after we get into uh, uh, the, the site design a little bit. So again, here are the first four lots that were endorsed uh, by the planning board several months ago, uh, and, uh, or the first five lots endorsed by the, uh, the planning board and the scenic road application. Uh, this for four lots um, out at the development. So we're proposing, again, uh, 11 lots. Uh, with, and again, if you look at the wetland boundary out in the back here, um, we've kept everything uh, obviously up tight to the road with the exception of uh, lot seven, which is out to the rear of the lot. In the grading of the lots, we have graded it such that, and again, with continued dialogue uh, with beta, uh, we've taken a slightly different approach in this last uh, iteration of the plan where originally when we were looking at the project it was the applicant's intent uh, to uh, have each individual homeowner maintain uh, their systems, uh, their stormwater management systems. They have gone ahead and engaged in some uh, contracts and purchase and sales agreements with uh, several buyers um, and, at this, and at that time the, the intent was to, to go with individual uh, ownership of the, the systems, but having had discussions with uh, Phil, uh, it was decided that a homeowners association would be employed and they are now on board with going with a homeowners association to manage uh, the system. So the long and short of it is um, uh, the, the topography on site continues to pitch in, a, in an easterly uh, direction. We have designed the site such that uh, for instance, lot one uh, does not require a stormwater uh, basin on it, uh, nor does uh, lot two. However, we've collected some of the stormwater uh, from lot two and have routed it over to detention basin area one. 
That basin is, also serves as an in, infiltration uh, basin due to the soils on, on site, which are primarily hydrologic soil group A throughout uh, the majority of the site with a, a sliver of hydrologic soil group B uh, in front of the site, and then to the back, uh, obviously, with the wetlands, uh, hydrologic uh, soil group D. So generally speaking, very well draining soils uh, on the site, which promotes uh, exfiltration uh, through the, uh, the basins. So what we have done in this design is uh, at the recommendation of beta is that, and this is the design currently before you folks, uh, we've consolidated the basins. So rather than have maybe a dozen basins as we had before, we've broken them down to about seven basins, located again along the property lines of lots two and three, of lots uh, four and five, uh, one to the, the rear of lot seven and one down below, uh, along the lot six, seven uh, property line, and then uh, along that seven, eight property line, uh, and again, out to the uh, north side of, of lot 11. In terms of the grading on the site, it's pretty much going where we uh, originally, uh, where it was originally intended in the uh, pre-conditions, uh, pre-existing conditions in, in terms of hydrology. So the proposed conditions, uh, hydrology not much different. If you recall, like I said, I pointed out this existing divide. We mimicked the existing hydrology, which is one of the principles of LID, as you folks know, um, uh, mimicking the, the existing uh, pattern. So essentially, we had that line comes through here, and we've again mimicked that with the way we've graded out uh, the lots. So EDA 100, the existing drainage area 100 and existing drainage area 200 are broken out into PDA 100, which is the unmitigated portion of the original EDA 100, and then PDA 200, the unmitigated portion of the previous uh, EDA uh, 200. So again, lots one and two, basically what this shows, lots one and two go unmitigated uh, uh, or a portion of lot two and, and all of lot one go unmitigated while a portion of lot two gets routed through uh, stormwater basin one. Uh, lot three gets routed through stormwater basin two uh, and so on. Uh, so again, the hydrology on site, uh, we've mimicked the existing conditions. Uh, hydrology, yes. Sorry to interrupt, but I just want to guide you along so we can follow along with you. Yep. So on our, our map two, Yep. We see the first one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sites to the right. Um, and you said, I just want to follow along. So there's a basin along the end, the top of um, lot three. Is that one of the basins? Yes, actually, it might be easier to illustrate on the color rendering. I apologize for that. Yes. So on lot three, yes, we have one right in here. So where would that be? Maybe do you think? Um, I'm trying to follow the symbols. It said there's some temp temporary sediment basins, yep. dotted lines. Yep, I'll get into that in a minute. Okay, great. Yep. I'm jumping ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Yep, yep. Just it will help us where we feel the, um, the ponds, the drainage ponds are. Yep. Be. So, like I said, with the well draining soils and everything, we were able to take credit for exfiltration uh, through these basins. We are required to maintain a two foot uh, groundwater offset minimum under the state regulations. Uh, to estimated seasonal high groundwater. In this particular case, we've been able to satisfy that condition throughout the, the site based on the soil testing that we've done. We've done a lot of exploratory soil testing. And we're in the program uh, currently of uh, individual sewage disposal system soil testing. So we're collecting a lot of data uh, in the field. In addition to that, we're required to recharge uh, groundwater because of the impervious area that we're introducing uh, to the site. As it turns out, we are, because of the way that the soils are on site and the availability of the footprints of these stormwater basins, we're able to, to uh, recharge eight times the DEP required amount. So we're promoting a, a great amount of groundwater recharge. That doesn't even take into account the 800 gallons per day or 800 plus gallons per day that's delivered through the sewage disposal systems. Uh, so again, in, in, uh, in harmony with your uh, stormwater bylaws, you folks you know, uh, promote the concept of lid, countryside uh, drainage. Um, that's what we're promoting here. Uh, we have uh, uh, swales between the lots. Um, 
and along the, uh, the edges of the driveway, which eventually get down to uh, the, the stormwater systems. Um, the, uh, as, you know, as you've noticed on, on these plans, um, the limit of clearing, uh, we've limited that. Um, lots one and two were, were opened up and uh, a little bit, and so what they're uh, uh, looking to do as they move forward, they're going to be a bit more conservative with the clearing on the lot and limit it only to those areas uh, that are required uh, for the, the improvements of the lot, including the septics and the stormwater systems. Thank you, Ken, for the sure. chair. I, I really like this, this new plan. <laughs> I, I can envision how it's going to look, and it's much appreciated. Yeah, and that's the thing. I think even with the, the swales on each side of the driveway, I mean, you do it right, and these guys do it right. You know, we're, we're really looking forward to seeing the, the development get built out. So with that, we, uh, um, again, the, the stormwater system, we're able to provoke groundwater recharge. We're able to attenuate the stormwater runoff of the 210 and 100 uh, year events. Um, there was a comment raised by uh, Beta uh, about the 100 year um, volume leaving the site. Uh, and anybody that does stormwater knows how challenging it is to mitigate for the stormwater volume. But I kind of wanted to put in perspective what it equates to in terms of the, the, the volume of runoff, the peak volume of runoff for the 100 year event um, pre and post. So basically, uh, we're looking at 7,000 cubic feet of stormwater runoff that leaves the site. That's equivalent to three pools, three 24 foot diameter pools, four foot deep across the 60 acres which discharge at various would discharge at various times into a 350 acre uh, uh, wetland system so we we're just the sorry we're just trying to visualize 20 24 foot pool is that a rectangle that's or from, a circle pool? that's from from you to me <laughs> a circle that's, yep okay Four okay foot above deep. ground yep. got it and, and and as you look at them because of the locations of these basins on site what happens is when the storm comes down and works its way through the basins, the peak time on these basins, they all peak at varying times. So there is a travel path. So this one, uh, obviously, when it gets down to the wetland, this, this little basin here, it takes less time for it to get down to the design point as it would uh, perhaps this basin in here or even something further away. So what happens is when you look at that 350-acre uh, watershed down gradient of us, it comes down to six thousandths of an inch of impact, assuming the water went nowhere else. So it was really, when we looked at it, and, and Beta had brought it up, which was, a, which was a good point, as a designer, we need to analyze that. So I just kind of wanted to put into perspective, you know, with the mitigation that we're proposing on site, how de minimis um, those impacts are. So I get the impression that you're, you're comfortable with it, Very you're confident. Yep, extremely. So Great, thanks. that's why I've got the uh, human shield. <laughs> <laughs> so, Again, that is it in, in terms of um, the, the colored graphics on it, and I've, I've gone through uh, the existing conditions hydrology. There was a question raised about the sediment basins and, and the like. So anytime we do, I'll get into that in, at the very end. Uh, so anytime we do uh, one of these systems, thank you. Anytime we do one of these uh, developments, uh, we propose a. Uh, Sediment, erosion sediment control plan uh, and a construction sequencing plan. So in this case here, this is the erosion sediment control plan for the first six lots into lot seven. This would be uh, lot seven uh, up above. As a result of the discussions that we had, and I think, oh, what was it, what, three weeks ago that we met? Two, three weeks ago with, with Don. Um, we had sat down, we had gone over uh, uh, some comments that uh, that were exchanged, we had some very good dialogue. And one of the things that came up from Don was on some of the lots we were doing some work within the 100 foot buffer zone. We also had some activity in the 50 foot uh, no disturb zone. But what we've been able to do is in this design, we've been able to pull the majority of the work out of that 100 foot buffer zone, with the exception of lots 10 and 11, which we'll go before the Conservation Commission on. So I bring that up only to point out that of the 60 acres, there's only two to three acres that are going to be lots, you know, two to three acres of, of uh, development um, of, of, of the lots that are going to be uh, within their jurisdiction. So I think that's, uh, that, that seemed to work out pretty well. But that was as a result of some discussions 
uh, with, uh, with fill in Dawn. So again, as we look at this um, uh, erosion sediment control and, and phasing plan, what we have is back to the diversion swales um, to, to start out as, as uh, they work on the lots, they're gonna create a construction anti-tracking pad out the front of the lots. That's gonna be comprised of trap rock and over that, um, I'm not exactly sure what we show on our detail, but I'd like to see that, you know, if you get, you know, four to six inch trap rock on top of that, you put a crushed stone, uh, you know, maybe a, a, a one to two inch crushed stone so that the vehicles are able to, to leave all the sediments uh, on site. And I know that in some cases it does wreak havoc with some of the tires of the vehicles access. So sorry, for the swales, you're referring to the little... Um, the dash lines. Towers, I guess you'd call oh, the dash lines. Yep. Okay. So basically, what, what are the little um, towers there? I guess that's the construction entrance. So that yep. would be the driveway. Yes. Okay. Yep. So the way that the, so that's what will be employed uh, to prevent any tracking of sediments out onto the uh, the public ways. Um, the way that typically works is that let's say some of these anti-tracking pads get full of sediment, the contractor would then go in, clean that out, and re and, and replenish that. So. With the, the erosion sediment control plan as part of our uh, project's operation and maintenance plan, uh, there are going to be erosion sediment control measures kept on site pretty much on a per lot basis. So they'll have a reserve of uh, hay bales and silt fence or, or wattles, I think in this particular case we're gonna go with straw wattles uh, and silt fence, uh, crushed stone, uh, so that when they have to replenish uh, the stone out at the, the access drive, they, they can. The diversion, channels are basically, if they're working on the, on the site and they create a situation where um, they know that they're going to be at a, at a toe of slope and it, it could be predisposed to uh, rills within the slope and perhaps some uh, scouring of that at the toe of slope, what they'll do is they'll create a diversion channel around to in intercept that and then bring that down to the, the sediment basin. Um, sediment basins are located uh, throughout various areas on the site and are depicted by the, the dash balloon lines uh, which have the, uh, the sediment uh, swales, the diversion swales leading to them. So, well, sorry, just a quick clarity. So those sediment basins, what will, be, what will they be comprised of? What kind of material? Basically what happens, you, you excavate an area out um, and then uh, uh, you allow any stormwater runoff to get down into the, into the area and settle out uh, within the, the area. Many times what we'll do is, and in fact, on this particular plan here, um, we do have areas that we're proposing slopes that exceed 15%, just as by the nature of the grading, three to one grading is actually a 33% slope. So what we've done on this particular plan is we've identified areas throughout the site where um, some construction matting, like a jute matting, may need to be employed to stabilize some slopes. Um, so basically those sediment basins are exactly that. They're holes in the ground that when sediment comes down into the area, it collects it so that it doesn't migrate in, down to resources. Would I be incorrect if I called that a drainage pond or is it very similar? It's similar, but it's only a temporary measure. By temporary, you mean? So when all is said and done as they start to, so they use them in, in different areas on the site. So if they're working in a certain area of the, of the site, they'll go to a, uh, the area just down gradient of that, create the, the, the sediment basin and then create a diversion uh, okay. channel down there. So it keeps water away from that area of the site and prevents it from migrating, the silts migrating. So I'm sorry to that. keep harping on it, but temporary, are you talking about just during construction? Yes. And, okay, so, yes. okay. Yeah. So if you could, it would help us if you talk, as you go through this, if, if there's a long-term um, retention pond versus yep. a, a temporary one. Yep. That would be very helpful. So, okay, so these are these are temporary and would be employed at, uh, during construction. Um, we do have areas identified on the plan as the, uh, the stockpile areas. Okay. Um, those would be equipped with a silt surround, which is a silt fence, and in some uh, instances, wattles. So to go back to the stormwater plans, yes. So the, the actual permanent stormwater uh, structures will be comprised of stormwater basins that are going to be able to infiltrate uh, at the bottom of the basins. Each of the basins are equipped with an outlet uh, control device. That device, in, in this particular case, is, is, is fairly simple. It's a PVC uh, type uh, structure. It's a, uh, 
uh, high density polyethylene actually uh, type of structure ADS makes them and it'll stand up out of the ground you know a couple feet out of the ground it'll have a, a lid on it for access and, and have holes caught out of the side of it you know maybe an eight inch hole or six inch hole that regulates the flow as it comes through to ensure that it functions not to result in increases in runoff um, downstream the basins are graded with a gentle three to one slope on the inside as, as required by uh, mass DEP and then will be loaned and seeded uh, to the inside. On the top side of the, the basin, we are proposing an eight inch, an eight foot wide uh, berm down to the down gradient uh, side along the back edge of it. So that in the event, and it's, it's, it's very unlikely that a piece of equipment is gonna have to get out there, but let's say something, they have to get out there and they have to replace something they want to bring out a uh, like a John Deere type gator type piece of equipment, throw the, the uh, parts on there, drive out there, they can easily uh, make that change. So Sorry, I'm making this pretty uh, interactive, but it's helping guide you to yep. uh, answer hopefully our questions. So I'm kind of curious, the permanent basins, where they would be, I mean, am I yep. still jumping the gun or? Nope, nope, I, I thought I covered that, but my bad. Okay. So the, the permanent basins are located uh, between lots mm -hmm. two and three in this area here. So where can we see that on that map? Is it just that on this map? That I have the I have the one. Why is it not in color? Yeah, it's not in color. It's easier. I've got it. Let me go right to the grading. David, they're, list, they're listed DB1, DB2. Yep. I'll yeah. On our map. Yep. I'll go right to the grading. Okay. Much easier to see. Not as pretty. Oh, the construction ones. But easier to see. I think so. Yeah, those are temporary. It says it's temporary. <laughs> That yeah, so that's kind of more what we're looking at there. Yep. Do you have this one? Yeah, there yeah. The, uh, page two. Nope. Is a better one to look at? I think it's on, it's on page four, I think, three or four. The, the, ba the basins are la labeled one, two, three, four. You'll see them on there. Page four? Yeah, I think so. How's that? Yeah, four. Will I approach the table with it? Would it be easy? No, no, if you just point out, we're all on the same four. map, page four, yeah. that's fine. So okay. is Basin uh, 1, which is located uh, uh, on Lot 2, upgrading Okay, so that's a little depression there that says, I can't read what I'm at, 3,000 yep. 3, feet or something like that? Yeah, so that's uh, E Basin number 1, uh, and that de that's a minor depression that's a, a couple or a few feet deep okay. in that location. Uh, D Basin uh, 2, which is located on the back of uh, lot three, like I said, we'll have a berm on the upper gradient side of it. Okay. Uh, and that is graded with a three to one slope uh, toward uh, the bottom of the basin. And with that, like I said, it will have that ADS uh, structure with a, a couple holes cored in the side and a uh, high density polyethylene pipe discharge okay. to the down gradient side onto a riprap uh, splash pad. The next one is located. Uh, up in here between uh, lots four and five, uh, and again, it takes the runoff that comes down through here, naturally heads this way, but with the improvements and the increases in runoff, uh, it is being collected here uh, and eventually discharged uh, out in this area here to the backside, again, on a properly sized riprap splash pad. Uh, the next one is located. So I'm going to refer to that one as three, right? If we just yep. number these yeah. as we go along. Yep. Yep. Three. Yep. That's, yeah. Okay. Yep, yep. that works. Uh, D Basin number four. D Basin number four was the cat's pajamas when it comes to detention basins, okay. and here's why. Um, if I can utilize in, in any of these designs, if I have an opportunity to utilize the existing topography, I'd love to do it. Where you just put in a berm in, at the inside of a swale, elevate it, and hold back the water uh, in the natural uh, swale. That's how I like to do it. There was a, a question raised by Beta, which I thought was a good question because it really didn't define the limits of that basin. So what we had done on the revised plans, because we weren't clearing for the basin, there was no need because we weren't grading it. The contours were such that we were able to achieve the volume that we needed uh, and properly size the basin. Uh, so in that particular case, we added uh, a graphic to the plan to show the uh, the limits of the basin, but this is, again, this is my favorite because it only requires a berm on the down gradient side. Functions okay. the same as the others, and that would be D Basin 
four. four. Yep. D Basin five is located between uh, lots uh, seven and lot eight and is elongated. It's got a long gentle swale from the behind lot eight that uh, flows uh, southeasterly into it. Uh, D Basin, uh, so that's D Basin five. Well, I have us here on uh, this plan, actually, I could probably. Yeah, I see DB7 up at the top, right? Yep, DB7. So you want to switch seven. the other plan now? So there'll be, let's yep. call it five on the first map. Yep. So this one would be DB7 out in the back. And then DB6 is located, <coughs> it's the most northerly basin located uh, on Lot 11. Great. Lot 11 down the bottom right. This is very helpful because those are so tiny, those DB, DB numbers. Yep. Is that the last lot? That would be the last lot. I don't see a okay, basin great. on 11. Where's that one? Yeah, where's the basin on 11? I don't see it. It's pretty small. Is it? Oh, oh, oh. oh. I, I see it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there it is. It's, it's, right, right, it's, right, okay. it's right there. Yep. Okay, yep. So is this a different plan than the one that Beta had reviewed and commented on? That yes. So we one of the comments that Beta had made, which I you know, and again, looking at the principles of LID and the way the the regulations are written, one of the the requirements of, of LID is that you mitigate at the source. Mm -hmm. So basically, in doing that, you know. We looked at it as taking, you know, taking the swales and mitigating on each lot. And again, with the program that was originally looked at, and with the homeowners uh, managing their own system, it seemed to make sense. And it was during the discussions with Beta uh, that it was suggested that perhaps we look at a slightly different approach. While we still use a low impact development type of, of approach with the swales, you know, perhaps lessen the, the number of basins, which would make it easier, which is a great idea easier for maintenance so with a maintenance company company coming in uh, to maintain the, the basins rather than have them go to a dozen basins it goes down to six or seven basins sorry, sorry can I just interrupt for a second because we have an administrative uh, task to take care of we have yep. another meeting starting at sure. eight so I'm going to transfer over to the chairman of the meeting so yes at eight o'clock we need to open the hearing for uh, Chamberlain Wayland project I'll move to open the public hearing for Chamberlain Wayland is there a second? Second. And uh, all in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> Against nay. Any abstentions? Any discussion? Motion passes, which means that we will come back to the open hearing when we will. Well, I'd like to make a suggestion yeah. that we just take a couple of minutes to speak to Chamber of Whalen and make a decision because if that's if they decide to to postpone their hearing, knowing that we only have six members of the board as opposed to nine, then if we can use that time. We don't have a full board here, and we, we don't have enough members uh, to, we may not have enough members to fully vote, and it's up to the applicant to decide if they want to maybe reschedule so, so for a later time, uh, which is why I'm chairing tonight. And, and I don't think he's chair. in here, though. So yeah, and, and they're not in him. here yet. Uh, he's here. He's here. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, <coughs> so maybe we'll, we'll talk to them off-channel. And then we can return to this, this discussion, and then we'll maybe talk to him on channel. Just have him pop up front, right, right. for a minute. Mm -hmm. If you guys don't mind, just step yeah, aside for two minutes, and then we might we might have a lot more time to discuss the stormwater. If not, we might have to uh, schedule for later on. Come on, sit in front. Well, we just have an administrative thing to take care of first, Paul, before you start grabbing seats. Can we have okay. a quick discussion with you? Sure. We don't have a full uh, board here, obviously. Uh, we have people traveling and some uh, last minute illnesses going on. So uh, we may not have enough members to. We might want to reschedule so yeah, we have the full board more members to vote. Um, maybe Elaine can explain it better. We'll just elaborate who we're missing. We're, we're missing Cliff and John and uh, Fran. Yeah. Does 
three have not missed previously, so they are eligible to view the. They are. And then well, I think Cliff. So they can sorry, miss one. Cliff. <coughs> Cliff has already missed one, I believe. No, he did no, not. He, did he, not. Missed, he, last time. he was here last time. No, but he watched. He had one that he had to watch on TV. Is that not for this? Not for the new. Okay. Not, not for the new public hearing. Okay, thank you. Just want to be clear. <coughs> Great, thank you. Okay. So in that case, what do you want to do about the storm water? So well, let's. I think we should. We still have this hearing open. Let's vote to reschedule it. To continue. To, a to just continue with this. this. Well, te technically, let's let Muriel run that part of the meeting. No, no, no. I'm talking about the storm water, though. Right, right. But yeah, as far as the motion is on what the continuing, I'll. So why don't you reschedule? I'll give you the floor. Yeah. For Chamberlain. And okay, then we can come back so we're more. just going to be a few minutes before we start. We did open your public hearing. We do have uh, a stormwater hearing in play, but we wanted to ask you that question. So if you m don't mind giving us a couple of minutes, we're just going to um, wrap no, 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 up no, no, no. with stormwater. No, hold on. Hold they on. want to continue. Just they, yes. They want to continue at a future date. Yeah. No. Whaling, no. Whaling no they want to no, continue, continue oh, right here now. tonight. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, right? okay, I'm yeah. sorry. I misunderstood. Yeah. Yeah. I, what, I thought you meant continue <laughs> at a future date. Oh My no. Bad. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just give us a couple of minutes to yeah. wrap up the hearing that yeah. was in process. So I guess it's back to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I thought. I thought. No, I, I didn't understood. understand what the applicant was saying. <laughs> My bad. Thank you. Okay. So let's. Yeah. Um. I guess we should reschedule. Continue. Continue. Yeah. Continue. So we should. Um, unfortunately, we only had a half hour today. So, um, so what is the schedule for Wailing? It's eight thirty to nine thirty. We really won't have any time today, right? We'll have to no, reschedule until a future date. It's, it starts it's at eight. Starts at eight. It doesn't so eight have to an nine. End. Well, it doesn't have an end time. It just started at eight. So it starts at eight. It's our last agenda item. Suggestions. <laughs> I'm just trying to debate whether we should have these guys wait around for an hour. There's not much. There, there isn't much. I think at this point, Mr. Chairman, and well, uh, I, don't, I don't want to rush through it. I mean, okay. we, we have a, we have an agenda to go through. We haven't heard Beta's comments. We haven't heard comments from the board. So we do. We'll, I'm envisioning we need at least another half hour to, to wrap this up. So the question is, do we want to try to get this half hour later on in this meeting, or in this schedule? Mm -hmm. Yes, the or schedule for what? I'm just trying to figure out too how it works out with the, the board. But there's two options on the table. Yeah, we can. That works. Postpone for an hour and continue later. Postpone is not a good word, but continue later in an hour. So or where we'd like to be is um, ideally we'd like to be in a position uh, that the hearing is closed uh, tonight. And I don't know in terms of how the, the board votes when they vote. Uh, hopefully, it's on the same night of the closure. What we'd like to do is, is uh, respectfully request that hopefully everything is is in order to position the board to vote in the affirmative to grant the, the permit. So ideally what we'd like to do is if we could handle that uh, tonight, and again, we appreciate, you know, the board as a volunteer board, um, and we know that, you know, again, hopefully it doesn't go late into the night. But sure, be the okay, let's, deal so we do end at 10, so let's work our way backwards. So I think the option would be in fairness to Chamberlain and Will and give them an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. I agree. So if you did want to do it tonight, you'd have to wait for an hour and a half to come back. So I Okay, so I'll accept a motion for <coughs> to continue the hearing until nine thirty tonight. Make that motion. Second. Second. Thank you. Uh, hold on, we're just going to vote for it. So the, all those in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed. All abstain. Great. See you guys in an hour and a half. Yeah. Have, a good, have a nice cup of coffee. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> Okay, welcome to our meeting. Uh, thanks for coming, everyone. Uh, they'll be right back in and help set up. Um, I'm temporarily chairing the meeting because our chair and vice chair are out, David's vice chair tonight. Uh, but Muriel is project manager, and I will yield the floor to Muriel. All right, and when our applicant comes back, we'll be raring to go. <laughs> One quick sec, if you could. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm.
we want to take a quick five minute break for this? Uh, we have been here for over an hour. I don't know. Maybe we should. Uh, we usually what do you guys think? John's here. Yeah, they're going to show up the same thing. Should we have to just get them over that? Do you have to want to take a break? Or usually we have it in our schedule with John. Just uh, get up and leave and you won't have a quorum. <laughs> <laughs> All right, All right we'll, we'll take a break officially until uh, 8.15-ish, and uh, we can take a little aisle break. So, uh, yeah. Get back soon if you can, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, I think we're going to uh, get going. I think everybody's back from their break. Before you open, I think, uh, do you want to speak? No, I, I, think, yeah, we want, I think we do want to continue it when the full board's here. Okay, that's certainly, your, that's certainly your right to do that. Now the other guys are coming. We just needed a little more time. No, I know. It was a, th yeah. Listen, this, ju this was news in to us late in the day today, or we would have uh, let you know ahead of time so you could have... I'm prepared and I know um, everybody who's here is interested in the, this hearing as well um, but it is the applicants purview if we don't have the full board to wait for the full board when can we get it next What's the mm. March 12th March 12th is that the next available meeting or that's just it is the next available slot yeah can we have a, again a, a late time slot again like a, o'clock, we get out for a couple hours. Speak into the microphone, please. Could we have a slot um, what? that's scheduled a little later that we could actually have a couple hours at least to be what? able to, you know, come out here and do this? Yeah, and we, we can get a lot more done. I understand. Um, what is our availability on March 12th? Is it 12th? Is it, well, we'll be open. We started early at 7.30 for, uh, <coughs> yeah, we only have one thing. For, we started early at 7? Seven. Seven. 7, we're starting at 7. For, and that was for whisper. Yes, whisper. So, yeah. so I would think we could probably we start at 7:30 and have not, not an hour and a half to two hours. That. Is that reasonable? I think so. Good. Does whisper right. only need a half an hour? Is that yeah, I would. I'm Do you think they need eight o'clock? Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's yeah. that's fine. I'm fair. Can we, can we schedule two hours? Is that is that amenable? To, I'm I'm right. fine with that. Is that yeah, amenable to the board? I, I thought we did whisper ridge for the 26 at seven. I thought we did too. No. What did we do? We did something at seven. Not on the twenty-sixth. Very twenty-six, seven p.m. That's what I wrote down. That's what I, wrote. That's what I thought oh, really? too. Twenty-six. Thank no. you, Amy. What Legacy Farm signage was March twelfth. So we're wide at open on the twelfth. I think we're wide open on. So what's the board's pleasure? Um, start at set at eight, and a lot two hours. Does everybody feel okay about that? Well, why don't we start our meeting at 7.30 and start right off with them? Because we're starting with Legacy. Oh, no, Legacy Farms is not a scheduled time. Yeah. Starting with time. There are some other items you could do those first so that people don't have to uh, wait. Particularly if we're going to if we're gonna okay. block off till 10. Shall sure. we get the administrative things done from sure. 7.30 to 8? Sure. Okay. And then we'll start with you guys at 8, and we'll have, we'll, we'll have that whole night for the meeting? Perfect. Okay. I do apologize to everybody. This was a late in the afternoon today circumstance. We will indeed hope for a full board on the 12th. Let's hope the flu season dies down. Do we technically need to vote on the rescheduling? We do actually have to vote to continue. So I'm sorry, before we go, um, let's, it's, it's my so we may be missing one member. I, I have a potential conflict on the 12th. So I missed last mm -hmm. meeting. I was out sick. So you would not be eligible to vote? That's correct. If, if I missed the 12th, I would not be eligible to vote. And we don't know about, um, actually, everybody else has been here for the other hearing, so it doesn't matter. Even, yeah, but I will. But I watched me Irfan, and time, he's watched, watched it. Video, so. so I yeah. watched the video. I watched last last video. Yeah, so, so you're I'm, eligible now. But if you I'm, miss a second, if I one, miss a second, not. okay, got it. Yeah, so I have to work that out. 
So I would actually love to be here. <laughs> yeah. Just to clarify, yeah. I, I thought if, if you miss one and you see the video, you can still miss another. No. Yeah. No. If you miss two, you're out. You're well, technically, you've only missed one because you saw the video. I yeah, no. Two no, I no. missed last last meeting because I was out sick. You can only catch. And I one. watched the video, but if I miss the twelfth, that'll be my second meeting. So uh, I think you're welcome. A motion. So, um, are you wanting the 12th if there's a potential conflict with a board member that may not be able to vote? I'd rather have, I think, I think you schedule it and if you have a situation where yeah. there are additional members You can continue, uh, that, I think that's the way to go. Okay. And you, it would be your choice to continue again if you wanted to. And you guys have, have experience in this situation, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, I will uh, entertain them. Correct. Oh. Yeah, it's full up. Um, I'll entertain a motion to continue this public hearing to March 12th at 8 o'clock and to a lot two hours for that. So moved. Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, thanks everybody, and I apologize for the inconvenience. Oh, oh yeah. nice! <laughs> except except, except that we voted to continue to attend. Yeah. So, so I'm going to make a motion then to reopen the previous March shift. Well, that's what we're going to do at 7.30. To an earlier time? So, I think you've got to ask a question. Elaine and Kobe, did, are we starting on March 12th at 7.30 or 7 on March 7, 12th? 7.30. 7 7 7 7 Normal time. time. Yeah. It does actually have to be from the microphone for our meeting. Uh, honestly, you can. Yeah, of course. My question is who pays for the uh, widening of Chamberlain Street? Would that be the, the taxpayers or the developers? So that is, is actually a question that has to be asked within the hearing, so I apologize. Yep, I, I misled you That's on that. Question, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, if you. It's all right. We want to know where people stand on those things. <laughs> Yes. I think we got. Is that the new yeah. Day? Yeah. Yeah. Late in the day. Thank you. Yeah. Was it that one? February eighth. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, we did not get. I think we got the email. I think we got email, but we didn't print it off, so it's not great. Thanks. Uh, I don't think we got this. I don't think so either. I don't. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that, does that replace the one we have we before? Had on the that the all the the very same. So, so just to be clear, that replaces the one from February fifth. Yes. Okay. okay. Thanks. A week later. So a lot of my comments. Uh, <laughs> well, it looks very close to. I'm not seeing any changes. So yeah, further down. Down. I'm sure further down there are. A lot of detail on that level. So procedurally, from a process standpoint, but we continued it to a time certain. What does that mean for us? How about we have a motion to let them come back Reopen. and follow we do a motion okay. to convene at another time? Oh. <laughs> Excuse me for a second. I won't be able to be here on, on March 12th as my mother's 100th birthday. Or all oh, wow. Oh boy! Wow, that's amazing. But uh, I, I did want to know if, if we did receive the letter. We did receive them. That's that's okay. I don't have to make it personally. No. Or, nope. It's in the record. Anything for it? Okay. Good. Thank you very much. It's also uh, my daughter's birthday. That's I'm what. Sorry? It's also my daughter's birthday. That's why I might not be here. <laughs> so we sh share birthday. <laughs> she won't be a hundred, but. Someday. <laughs> 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 you are doing great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. You bet. Take care. Have a great trip. And blessings. Oh, wait, wait. wait. So I hate to ask this. Um, how is it we know that we didn't have any interested members of the audience, and I think that we did, who are not here now? 
because of the 930. Mm -hmm. I know I saw Saddle Hill residents, and I know we said 930. So I, I feel we, I feel we have to wait. Unfortunately, listen, don't hate me. No, I think she's right. I think really, we have to we wait. Were surprised by the decision because they, they changed their mind. Kind of thing. Right. That's fine. So you guys. Well, you know, so, we get paid we this, handsomely we do this. For every this. Week. <laughs> we, we do this every two weeks, regardless. So. Yeah. Yep. Okay. okay. That is that is my. That's my we, should yeah. we um, can we make a motion to adjourn ourselves till nine thirty? Till nine thirty. Recess. Yeah, recess, recess until nine thirty. Yeah, right. that's fine. Yeah, let's go for a Get a cup of coffee or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like something. something. I, I apologize, something but I think we have to. Be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so can we have the mics off and just the video for the next until nine thirty? Yeah. I would think so. Um, do we need to vote on that? I don't. We haven't opened this yeah. hearing. So I don't think good. we have a choice. Right. I think we we're. I think we're on pause until yeah. nine thirty. That was our last action. Okay. Whether cool. whether we like it or not, right. whether we voted good. or not, I think okay. we're waiting until nine thirty. Okay. See you then, guys. <coughs> okay. All right. Thank you, our home viewing audience. If you are in fact home viewing, <laughs> still. And we have every member back. Is the audio on? Yeah. Audio is on. Audio is on. Yes. Hello. Oh, I hear a game. I think we're live. What's it? Are we live? We're good. Thank we're you. We're live. <coughs> Just live hey. on the screen. Here we go. That's my we're too live. We're too live. Hey, Frankie, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm live. We just we're live on TV. You can watch us. I'll be there in a, in like a half hour. Okay. What do you think? <laughs> Thirty-seven minutes at least. All right, sorry about that. We'll go into no ringer mode. We left off, and we need to vote to come back in. We just come back in because we're scheduled at 9.30, and the floor we is yours. Should we continue? We need reopen. to vote to reopen. Vote to reopen. reopen. I'll vote to reopen. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Nay. No discussion. No assumptions. Motion passes. David has the floor. Okay, thank you, Frank. So, um... Let's find the agenda really quickly. So we, we've had the, um, are we okay with the overview from SVM Parsons? So you, you feel like you got through everything you needed to get through? I did. In the Thank interest you. of time, that'll probably be good. So comments from the town department. Um, we do have a comment from the Board of Health, memo dated 12-22-17 from Sean McAuliffe, Port BOH Director. I have reviewed the application and have no comments or concerns, and I don't think there's any town departments in the audience. So I think we're good with that if everybody's on the board is okay with that. Okay, and then next up is to have the um, number four beta review. So, um, yes, you are up. I was just I was trying to figure out the best way to do this in the interest of time. So I'm going to do the abbreviated version. Okay, but also just let me run this by you and see what you think. We do have these 10 conditions that only seven apply to this project for the standards. Yep. So I would, at one point I'd like to go through each of these seven and just I will. make sure. Okay, perfect. Take it away. All right. Um, Phil Paradis uh, with Beta Group for the record. We uh, were the peer review consultant for this project. Uh, we've been working with Wayne uh, on several iterations. Um, this project is a little unique uh, in that it's a subdivision without a new road, um, and that help that what that requires a little. We had to do some thinking in terms of how we apply the stormwater management standard and try to get a system, um, and we and we simplified it through a process here to make it so that it would be uh, sustainable because uh, we, we just want to make sure that it, you know the whatever we 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 uh, design and, and impose on this project <coughs> would be something that could be maintained and, um, and, and for the long term so so there's discussions on how we do that we simplified there was it was a very elaborate uh, low impact development technique design for each lot um, and um, so we, we kind of compromised on, on what you see today um, and, and that it, it uh, the, the number of basins were reduced so that we could make sure that 
the, in, in, in general, it would be easy to maintain. Having said that, um, there's a number of, of, of good things in the project. Uh, all the roof water will be directed to uh, uh, subsurface infiltration systems. Uh, so you have some infiltration there. Uh, the majority of the sites do um, run off to um, treatment basins of some sort, except for three lots. Um, and I think those can be addressed probably through the uh, notice of intent proceed because those those are the ones closest to the wetland actually. So um, although I think he meets the the the, the intent of the stormwater uh, management standards, uh, I think the commission may be looking for additional things and protections <coughs> related to um, water quality uh, from those lots. <coughs> Having said that, um, <coughs> there are ten standards um, for stormwater management. The Massachusetts Stormwater Management Standards. They include uh, um, no new outfalls to wetlands, um, and that, uh, no untreated wetland, uh, uh, un untreated discharges to wetlands. So the, the project uh, complies with that. Could it, can I pause you for one second? <coughs> Is it okay if we put the car one back up there for reference? So are you using that specific one or? It doesn't matter which one. No, just, okay, could you, yeah, I just, just slow you down for one second, because you did say that the three lots didn't have, um, weren't directly drained. Just, can you just point those three out for us? Yeah, just so we're. Sure. So, yeah, so the, the, this, this lot, the, the driveway drains off and then to the wetland. This one drains that way. The rest drain through a series of, 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 of uh, swales, two ponds, and, and this one does not. This one drains right off. So for, <laughs> I guess, is it lot 11, the far one 11? <laughs> I yep. thought there was a, uh, a basin there for that one to drain off. There is a basin right here. But not all the drains do. But it, does, it, it, won't, it won't get the okay. water from the Perfect, driveway. perfect, thank you. All right, so sorry for the interruption. So back to your list, you said number one <coughs> complied with. Yep. Fully compliant, great. So, uh, and they've designed uh, mitigation for number two, which is no increase in peak rate of runoff from the, from the development. Complied. Uh, and they, yep. Yeah. So we reviewed the, the hydrologic model, and that complies. They, uh, number three is uh, groundwater recharge. Uh, again, the number of uh, basins uh, that they've, they've designed, as well as the roof runoff, uh, it meets the minimum required for groundwater recharge. Number four is uh, water quality. Um, that means that uh, from pavement surfaces, they've got to have 80% uh, TSS removal. Uh, it's a little bit difficult in this situation because they do have uh, a number of overland flows that would would increase that um, value. But everything they, they just assumed it went right from the driveway to the basin, uh, and and they they would comply with the uh, water quality standard. Uh, number five is. Uh, stormwater critical areas. Uh, they are not in those stormwater critical areas. Not applicable, correct. Not applicable. Number six is a... I was going to be impressed if you had all ten memories. Land yeah. use. <laughs> <laughs> land use. Yeah, no, I do this every day. So, <laughs> so uh, number six is a, a LAPL. Uh, they're not producing a land uh, use uh, subject to pollutant loads. High right. pollutant not loads. applicable. Um, and number seven, number eight, number seven is a redevelopment project. This obviously doesn't apply. Doesn't apply. Okay, great. Uh, number eight is a uh, construction period um, uh, erosion control. It's an erosion and sediment control plan. Uh, as was illustrated, uh, they've got a they've Temporary got a layout reasons. for one. Um, they're going to have to uh, provide a stormwater pollution prevention plan which is a fairly uh, robust um, document that will be, that EPA requires as part of their permit. Okay. 
Okay. Um, so we've asked them to provide a copy for the town as a as a condition. Um, but in general, they have they have shown <coughs> that they have erosion controls. Uh, they have uh, okay. they thought preliminary thought thinking out of, of sediment sediment ponds. Uh, we would just ask to make sure that they protect the uh, infiltration basins during construction so that they, they don't get uh, silted up before okay. they even get started. Hay bales, something like that? Or? Hay bales oh, and or um, if they're going to re reuse uh, the basin, use it as a sediment basin before, is that they don't excavate all the way down so that they would come, come back and, and excavate the last <coughs> fork and they take all the sediment with okay, them. Okay, makes sense. So, uh, number nine is a operation and maintenance plan, uh, which they've provided, and we'll have to uh, work on. Uh, uh, the town requires that be um, an agreement with the town in terms of how that's going to do. It. So I think they're going to handle it through a, um, a home. Home. home yeah. Yeah. Okay, right. Yeah. Um, and uh, we we went back and forth because there's no. There's no road to tie it to. There's no, you know, we just want to make sure that these things just can get forgotten. <coughs> um, I think, I, I, can, I, can I jump in? Sure, I think when we did um, the Golden Pond expansion, we wrote that into the condition so that people, there was a mechanism for um, recourse. I, I did just note that to the okay. list of possible right. um, conditions. Thanks. So mm -hmm. we can discuss that. Is there the chair too? Sure, Phil. <coughs> For issue with SW7, I know you just you kind of covered it. I just wanted to just be clear um, your response to the response to uh, the BMPs for lots 10 and 11. Uh, that's just basically the Conservation Commission is going to look at it, review it, and then they'll get back to us, or we're, we're just handing that to them and, and then with your recommendation and then. Yeah, so I copied uh, Don on all these uh, trans so, trans trans so he, he, he knows, uh, as well as uh, Melissa is also in our office, so I will. So as far as our recommendation, is, that's covered. So they, they kind, of, kind of by the letter of the law, they meet the requirements. However, I think uh, the conservation is going to have a but little bit But when it's on the ground and happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think they can do a little bit better in those two situations, and then I don't think it's going to be much effort on, on the developer's part to do that. So. Um, sorry. <coughs> <coughs> when you say the letter of the law, they comply. Um, and looking at lot 11 and 10, I'm not sure. I mean, it seems like a direct discharge to the wetland. Um, am I seeing that incorrectly? So um, they don't have like a point source discharge? Right. It's an overland flow. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and, and you're going to get some natural, it, it, would, it, would, it would kind of operate as a, as a low impact development technique in terms of the sheet flowing over the lawns to the, to the wetlands prior to getting to the, I don't think they're in the spot. Are those driveways in the spot? Not the driveways are, I believe, not. Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. So, um, so again, I, I would, I would, I would think that the commission on those two particular lots will won't, will ask for an additional um, mm -hmm. BMP. So. Thank you. And then number ten is illicit discharges. Uh, I don't think they have any now. It's all woods, and they promise not to do it in the future. So. Great, thank you. Uh, question? Go ahead. Um, so, issue SW13 uh, is a recommended condition, uh, which we just covered now, uh, about having a completed q and I'm sorry, o &M plan and HD, HOA information. Uh, yeah. Operation and maintenance plan, yeah. For Operation and maintenance plan and homeowners association. homeowner association information prior construction. So that's a condition. Uh, and then the uh, second one you've recommended is uh, operation ma maintenance plan and completed SWPPP will complain the applicable information required, which is 
uh, things in item SW14 D A through E. Is that correct? Yeah, and yeah. right, and it, uh, the formal stormwater pollution prevention plan encompasses a lot more than that. But just make sure that those things are in there. Yeah, so I got these two as additional like the solution from water prevention plan and the homeowner association up in the operation maintenance plan. Yep. Mr. Chair? Certainly. Um, what exactly is involved in maintaining these uh, sedimentation basins after the, the homeowners <coughs> take over? So you'd want them to go out and look at, make sure that they're you know, not eroding. You'd look at the accumulation of sediment in, in, the, in these basins. Uh, you'd want to have them mowed at least two times a year to keep the trees from growing out of them. Um, and then obviously, if, if there's a lot of sediment, take the sediment out. Uh, if there's, if there's uh, a noticeable um, lack of infiltration, you would rototill the bottom to loosen it up again. Um, and then revegetate it again. Mm -hmm. So that's. So has that all been spelled out already in the stormwater prevention plan? Yeah. Okay. That's right, that's right here. Did we on page nine. Through traffic condition, um, supply a copy of the erosion matting control plan. Was that? Erosion what kind of plan? Erosion control matting. Control matting. Oh. SW8. SW8. Yeah. Was that something that was? Does that need to that be a condition to wait for? Cool. Just a, just, a, just a supply a copy of the plan. You added that to the uh, prevention plan? Yeah, he, yeah. As he, yeah okay. he talked about the steeper slopes. Okay. Yeah. So it's he added showed to the, the location <coughs> of those. So right. we don't need it. Also include it in detail. And it just, just, okay. just so you folks get a, a flavor of a stormwater pollution prevention plan, this is your copy. Okay. okay. What it doesn't include, so as uh, Phil had indicated, they're pretty stout when you get all the junk in them. Yep. Okay. So right now, this is your streamlined copy. What it doesn't include is all the plans, all the permits. So when all is said and done, Dave Anderson, who's left, yeah. um, Dave will have a copy of this, which is going to be a three-ring binder this thick with all the guts in it. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to admit this to the sure, uh, thank you. to the board uh, and to the public record mm -hmm. so that uh, you have an idea as to <laughs> the signatures, the this by owner yeah. uh, <laughs> and the developer have their signatures in there as, as do the, the contractors. Uh, so as a contractor comes on board, he'll have to sign that the SWPPP will get you guys a copy of that and you can keep filling the book as you go. Great, thank you. Okay. Chair. You go ahead, yes. So I mean, I've represented a number of uh, homeowners and homeowners associations. They typically have no idea how to deal with the maintaining one of these bases. So the one thing I would, I would ask is like, do you have a mechanism for when you transfer control to the homeowners association where you can provide some kind of training or walk them through this document? I think this, I think it's a fabulous document that you're, you're giving, um, but walk them through it so they understand what their responsibilities are. Yes, I mean, we basically uh, plan to hire a landscape firm, professional landscape firm, to come in twice a year, once in the spring, once in the fall, and they will do basically, as, as outlined in my beta, you know, check all the infiltration systems, make sure they're functioning well, mm -hmm. and at a certain point, a homeowner will become the head of the HOA, and uh, if they refuse to, then we'll stay involved. But generally, we like to, at a certain point, have one of the homeowners step in and, and take over. And it's not a big ticket item. I mean, it's probably five hundred dollars per home per year. So a budget of five to six thousand dollars should adequately cover that. Mm -hmm. So I mean I guess what what I'm saying is a lot of, a lot of times when you hand it over to the homeowners just they're not sure what they're supposed to do. Well, that's why I think so. a professional landscape firm yeah. right. Right. Yeah. right. Right. So yeah, so there's a detailed uh, <coughs> inspection form in the in the in the so, uh, folder. Yeah. There's a detailed map showing mm -hmm. you where all the and, and it, it, it lists all the things you need to do. So as long as is that as long as they have that that document mm -hmm. that, that they can pass it along to the the homeowner and I mean if you need some assurances you know some some uh, boards require reports be submitted uh, on an well, annual basis. I might suggest why don't we when we go through and and list mm -hmm. the conditions. There's some descriptions in there, and if, if you feel something else should be added, we could maybe at that point sure. discuss sure, it. 
It sounds, it sounds like you guys have a decent grasp of, it, of, of my issue and, and, and that it's a yep. about that. Other good questions? Any other board discussion? The, um, the HOA, or in this, or this responsibility of the HOA, uh, if it's maintained by your organization, it would be like a kind of property management kind of correct. situation. That's correct. So they planned it. Until such time someone takes it over. If no one takes it over, we'll stay involved. Thank you. <clears throat> Dave? Would the board want to review those HOA documents before they go into effect to make sure it covers what you need to cover? Make that a condition. <clears throat> yep. Sure. Can I just, Beta's reviewed this HOA document, right? Excuse me? You've reviewed this document no. that we're So we did, we did not review okay. our uh, uh, homeowner's agreement. Uh, That's did, not in there. Right, right. Right. But right. we did review the, the the operation and maintenance plan. Okay. Um, as well, you know, as it pertains to this plan. So I believe that's covered by Phil's comment on SW 14, item D, item F of the H having the HOA. I'm sorry, SW 13, uh, providing completed. O and M and HOA information, and, and I, I do have that noted as an additional condition. So we let, we'll get the verbiage right when we get that there. Sure. The HOA and or, the or, uh, or are you going further? And would it the, would be the board? Would it be the board who would review it, or a staff person, or you know, would I identify what happens once it gets submitted? So, so can we put it as part of that same condition? Sure. You think? Okay. Certainly. So we're, we're going to look to you for help on that when we get there. <laughs> you can generally word it. We can. Cool. <clears throat> So, um, the, <coughs> yeah, are there any comments from the public? Thank you, Amy. Which is another way to say. No, no, but nobody no, just gets to say the right, right. thing. The right thing. <coughs> so, um, one more item before we do the voting options, I think, uh, that's not listed on the agenda, is to, to walk through the conditions, the standard conditions. So, I think we should do that now if everybody's yep. okay with it. Yep. Okay, so um, we have the stormwater management. I have the stormwater management permit in front of me. I don't know if you guys probably do not. We do mm -hmm. not. Okay. So um, the first condition is that all erosion and sediment control shall comply with the following performance criteria. So this talks about minimal total area of disturbance, protect the natural features, um, sequence activities, minimize simultaneous areas of disturbance, um, minimize peak rate runoff, minimize soil erosion and control sedimentation, sedimentation during construction, um, divert uncontaminated water. Uh, I, I apologize, I should have gone through the numbers, but I'm on F now. Maximize groundwater recharge. Uh, G, install and maintain all erosion and sediment control. H, prevent off-site transport of sediment. I, protect and manage on and off-site material storages. Jay, just to give you a feel for it, this is a six item document and this is number one and I'm on Jay. I mean, it'll go pretty fast, but just to give you a feel, because you don't, I apologize, you don't have it in front of you. Um, Jay, comply with applicable federal, state, and local laws. K, prevent significant alterations of habitats. L, institute interim and permanent stabilization measures. If anybody would like more details, some of this I'm just summarizing, so just feel free to jump in if you want more specifics on these, but it sounds like they got a lot of it covered. <laughs> Properly manage on-site construction and waste materials, present off-site vehicle tracking of sediments, that was N. O is dust shall be controlled, and P is divert off-site runoff. <coughs> so now I'll do number two, um, which I think is where we had some concerns. The project shall comply with the following erosion and sediment control requirements. So A, we're going to go through A through L. So A, prior to any land disturbances activities commencing, the developer shall physically mark limits, so marking the limits. Um, B, measures shall be installed prior to soil, soil disturbance. Measures shall be taken to control erosion. Sediment and runoff water shall be trapped and retained within the protecting protected area, project area, sorry. C, sediment shall be removed once the volume reaches a one quarter to one half inch height of a hay bale. Sediment shall be removed some silt prior, silt fence prior to each, to reaching the load bearing capacity 
of the silt fence, which may be lower than one quarter to one and a half inch the height. So I think we had some questions about removing the sediment. So it's covered specifically in uh, 2C. 2D, sediment from sediment traps or sedimentation, sedimentation pond shall be removed when design capacity has been reduced by 50%. 2E, soil stockpiles must be stabilized or covered at the end of each workday. F, disturbed areas remaining idle for more than 14 days shall be st stabilized with weeding, with seeding, wood chips, etc. For active construction areas, sorry, G, for active construction areas such as borrow or stockpile areas, roadway improvements in areas within 50 feet of construction. Okay, I'm gonna, sorry, I'm summarizing, I'm trying to do a little bit here. Perimeter sediment control shall be installed and maintained. H, a tracking pad or other approved stabilization method shall be constructed at all entrance and exit points. I, permanent seating shall be taken in the spring from March through May and late summer. Site where seating is found to be impractical, other stabilization techniques shall be used. J, all slopes steeper than three over one. Upon completion, and embankments must upon completion be immediately stabilized with sod seed. So those are the steeper areas to make sure they get stabilized. Uh, K, temporary sediment trapping devices must not be removed until the permanent stabilization is there. And the last one for two L, all temporary erosion and sediment control measures shall be removed after the final site st stabilization. Okay, those are the, a lot of bullet points. These other ones will go a little quicker. Three, minimum of seven days prior to the start of construction, a, a detailed construction sequence shall be submitted. Four, all required stormwater pollution prevention plan, stormwater construction site inspection reports shall be submitted to the principal planner within 14 days of each in inspection. Five, an adequate stockpile of erosion control materials shall be on site at all times for emergency or routine replacement and shall include materials to replace Repair or replace silt fences, hay bales, sto storm, stone filters, etc. And the last one, Saddle Hill in the vicinity of the project shall be swept as needed throughout the construction process. So, do you guys have a copy of this? Or do we need to get to them? Of your standing conditions? Yes. If that's online, we can easily obtain that. Can they, Elaine, they have we can write make sure they get it, okay. Because I'm about to ask you if you're good with all these six conditions, you know. <laughs> I want to make sure they all sound reasonable. They do. Okay, they so those are our standard ones. Um, so we're looking at, um, I think Phil suggested that we, um, we, we, we want to see the stormwater water prevention plan. Yeah, stormwater pollution prevention plan. So, so this is our project that you have a motion. Yes. I'd like to motion that uh, the applicant provide a complete O&M and HOA information prior to construction. Uh, WDA, the applicant will provide a completed OEM plan and OGOA information prior to construction to the principal planner. Or the land use department. Or the land use department. I don't know. We'll go to the land use department. <laughs> okay. Or, well, uh, I don't know. So we don't have a principal planner right, right now, right? <laughs> Uh, the second, uh, the so second. Hold on. So, lady, you, you have enough detail as long as they provide you. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And the Perfect. second recommendation for a condition is that the operation and maintenance plan and completed SWPPP will contain the uh, applicable information that is listed in item SW14A through D and uh, subsections. Could be good with that. He's saying a mouthful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Elaine, does that sound fair? So it's SW 13 and 14, essentially? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I have a motion on the table for that. Anybody want to second that? To add those to so the, the list of standard conditions. conditions. Correct. I would make a second. I second. Yeah, yeah. that's fine. Uh, any discussion? Everybody? Um, so what what is the recourse if this if these conditions aren't met exactly, Elaine? So why don't we let's just vote on adding these two conditions? Oh, I'm fine. And then with we'll that. have another yep. vote, right, yep, yep, Elaine, yep. to approve all the conditions. I can I just ask? Sure. So uh, typically on a project that requires infiltration, 
um, we typically also add a, a condition that a town official or um, the designee would observe the, sub, the subsoil conditions w once it's excavated to, uh, to make sure it, it, it matches the design. Is that noted anywhere in your no, document, it's, or we just add on? It's, it's okay. Unfortunately, it is. Will you be able to get the, the, the verbiage on that suggestion? Does that make sense, Elaine? I have that. Yep. Oh, you have it. Like awesome. From what he said. Awesome. Uh, so, so we have to a friendly that. amendment to add that in. I accept the friendly amendment. <clears throat> so, well, what's the uh, summary on the one liner on that? The town official okay. oversee. The town official will oversight. Okay. The inspector on behalf of the town will inspect it to ensure the soil conditions match what was. Inspect sure. soil conditions yeah. after construction or. No, before, before we put loam and seed down, we want to see the soil. Mm -hmm. Okay. When it's excavated. I just want to word it properly when you summarize here. Or summarize it properly. <laughs> <laughs> Any other discussion? So we have six standard um, conditions in front of us and three additional conditions specific for this project. That piece helps me know that someone goes out and sees it. So Great. that satisfies me. Yeah, we definitely. Obviously, this is a lot of technical stuff that we don't know yeah, about. Yeah, I can but be we, no we want to make sure we don't there. miss, <laughs> okay. miss the, right. the general concept here. Any other discussion? Uh, I, one thing that occurs to me since only a couple of the lots are within Concom's jurisdiction, um, might be good to require an as built plan at the end to make sure it's constructed in accordance with, with the plan. So typically that's something CONCOM would, be, would require, but they're only going to do that for a couple of lots. I appreciate that. Everybody mm -hmm. okay with that mm -hmm. as built plan? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would add that as a friendly amendment as well. To your own is, is, okay. that, is, that, is that how that works? We're all not. I don't know if that could work that way. <laughs> so I can add it. That's so, Elaine, question. is it okay if we have one vote, including? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. We don't have to vote in. in to amend all these. So, so Chloe, if can't you miss it, Irfan made the friendly I, amendment of Elaine's suggestion, which I've accepted. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad somebody's following all that. Robert's rules. So just to summarize, we do have four voting options. Well, we, we still have to vote to accept the... Uh, I think Elaine said we were okay conditions. without that. You can, your one vote can be do to approve it with conditions. That's one of the options, is to approve it with conditions. conditions. Okay, so the motion right now is to accept the conditions. But we, right. can, we can do this approval. Well, then, Frank's right there. Right. We have a motion on the table. Let's just see it through. And, and, uh, Hold on the motion. So okay. we have a motion to um, amend the standard <laughs> conditions with four conditions uh, that I will read later. Um, I think we're all familiar with the four. If anybody is not clear about it, I can read them again. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, abstained, none. So carries. Okay, so we've uh, we voted to add those four conditions. So now we're going to take our second and hopefully final vote for um, all ten conditions. Mr. Chair, I move that we approve with conditions that we've listed. Uh, modification of restrictions which will ensure that the project meets the standards and adequately protects water resources. Is there a second? Second. Second. Is Second. that one of the specific choices? Is that what you were reading? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank Fumbled you. Frank. Over it, but yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure we weren't freewheeling. So, any further discussion? Um, so, just to, to highlight the six standard conditions plus the four conditions, I'll spell them out now: a stormwater prevention plan, um, a homeowners association and operations maintenance plan review. Uh, town, town official inspecting soil conditions and an as built plan. Does that sound fair, Elaine? Those, you have those four mm -hmm. extras yep. and details of those? So I see we're ready for a vote. Yep. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Those abstained? So carries. I think we crossed all Thank our you for your uh, patience, gentlemen. Thank you all. Thank you. I appreciate you staying late. <laughs> we're at the witching hour. <laughs> Uh, I'll make a motion to uh, oh. adjourn. Yes. Take control from David. Accept your motion. Is there a second? I'll second. So, thank you. All those favor, say aye. 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 Take care. Aye. 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 We get to see these guys again. Yes. Oh, this is the fourth section. This is what happened.